Next, let's take a look at the miter flange. I'll start a new part and make a simple sheet metal plate. To do this, all I have to do is draw a rectangle and click the Base Flange tab button. You'll notice that the property manager for the base flange does not give me the extrude options. This is because the profile is a single closed contour instead of an open contour like we used in the base flange lesson. Although there are no bends in the part at the moment, you can still define the sheet metal parameters. Before I go on, let's take a look at a completed miter flange on another part. You can see that the miter flange, unlike the edge flange, can have bends already added. The shape of the miter flange is defined using a sketch. The placement of this sketch is important. If I highlight the sketch, you can see that it captures the profile of the flange. Notice it's sketched on a plane that is perpendicular to the edge where we want our flange to be created. In other words, if you look directly into the sketch plane, you'll be looking right down the edge where the flange will be added. Let's go back to our new part and see how this sketch is created. I want the flange to be along this edge, so the sketch I need to create should be on a face perpendicular to that. So which face should I use? This one, the small face that is only as big as the thickness of the sheet metal. It's so small that you'll have to zoom in pretty close to select it. If you want to avoid zooming in, you do have an alternative. If you click the line tool or any other sketch tool from the sketch toolbar, SOLIDWORKS will prompt you to select a plane, face, or edge to begin your sketch. If you select the edge where you want your miter flange to go, notice SOLIDWORKS will begin a sketch for you in the proper orientation. There are a couple of things to note about using this method. SOLIDWORKS is not actually beginning the sketch on the small face. It's creating a new plane normal to the edge you select. This can add some clutter to your feature manager tree. You should also know that the sketch plane will be created on the side of the edge closest to where you pick. I picked closest to this end, so the plane was created here. Had I clicked closer to this end, I would be sketching on the other side. And one final thought before we move on. I clicked the line sketch tool, then selected the edge to begin my sketch. I could have also selected the miter flange icon, and SOLIDWORKS would have prompted me to select a plane, face, or edge just as it did when I used the line tool. Let's continue with the sketch. The profile shape can be just about anything as long as it connects to the body of the sheet metal. If your profile will include bends, don't worry about rounding corners. SOLIDWORKS will take care of that. Once the sketch is complete, click the miter flange button and the property manager will show the options you have when using the miter flange. First, we have a selection window. This is where you identify which edges will be affected by the miter flange. One edge is already selected based on the location of the profile sketch. If you need to extend the miter flange beyond this corner, you can continue selecting edges. The edges must connect to the first edge. That is, I can't select this edge, but if I select this edge, you can see the miter flange will continue. Since you're introducing new bends into your sheet metal part with this feature, you do have the option of changing the bend radius used by unchecking this box and specifying a different value. If you leave the box checked, the part's default bend radius, the one defined in the sheet metal feature, will be used instead. Next, you have the flange position option. As we saw in the edge flange lesson, this will control how the flange material is added to this part. Notice that if I use the Material Inside option, the overall length and width of this part will remain the same as the original plate I started with. This is important if you've sized your plate to fit within a tight tolerance. If you use either the Material Outside or Bend Outside options, the overall size of the part will be larger than the original plate. Keep this in mind so you're not surprised later if your part is larger than you expected. The Trim Side Bends option is available here as it is when you create an edge flange. The next option is the gap distance. This controls the amount of space left between adjacent flanges, like you see in this corner. The space is necessary so the flanges don't intersect each other when they're folded. Now by default, the miter flange will extend along the entire length of the edges you select. These offset parameters allow you to shorten the miter flange at the beginning or the end. All you do is type in a value for the offset, and you can see in the preview how the flanges are shortened. If you need to change the bend allowance used to calculate the flat pattern of the flanges you're creating here, you can check this option and modify the values. I'll use the default settings and click the green check to complete the miter flange.